invite you to do so. Going to Hebrews chapter 10. This is where we are going to launch from tonight. How many of you had a rough year last year? Okay, I see some of your hands. How many of you had a rough year last year? Okay. Did you know last year was one of the greatest years of spiritual warfare? I mean, not your fighting. It was literally warfare in the heavens. Major warfare. So if you came through some of those things you did, it wasn't because of you. I just want you to know the Lord did take some things down. It was a great year of warfare. Um, in fact, um, if, if you remember, it was 5777, which was the year of the swords, which talks about a lot of the war that was going on. But what we didn't see that there was going to be an onslaught um, against your mindsets and against some things that were going on because God had already ushered angels to begin to war on your behalf uh, and begin to do biddings on your behalf. Um, last year, we received so much from people, you know, um, you know, I'm really down, blah, 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 blah. People were walking in shame. They were walking in guilt. And they were literally um, at a place where they could have waited to cross the river to go into Jordan or they could do another loop into the wilderness. And a lot of people chose to do another loop into the wilderness to go back to look at their past. When you look at your past, you're, going, you're doing another loop. When you're recognizing your past, you're doing another loop. And we have to get out of the place where we can no longer recognize our past. We have to move into a new place and move into some new things. Amen. Um, this year, you're going to see a lot of discipleship coming. Um, many of you are going to get um, pregnant this year. Um, spiritually. I'm expecting to have a lot of babies this year. They are already in the physical. It first comes the natural, then the spiritual. So um, I'm looking for God to literally bless me with tons of sons and daughters this year. So when they come through the door, know that they're probably a potential. They could have been in my womb already. Are, am I, do everybody understand? All right, they, they may have already been in my womb, okay? And guess what? They're not yet delivered, so you need to play midwife. I know you understand that, okay? Uh, but they're not, you're not midwifing them for Apostle Kevin. We're midwifing them for the king, okay? And that's important right now, getting them through um, what they have to go through. That birth canal... Um, I wish one day I, I'll just sit down and just preach to you on a birth canal. Um, it is an incredible time. Um, and some of you are even in your birth canal right now. You don't even know it. Um, and you know Danielle just have a, had a baby. Well, you know, when babies come out, they're really ugly. <laughs> we may not want to receive that, but the head... How many of you had a perfect shape, head, head shaped baby? Anybody? Okay. Oh, yours was perfect head shape? Oh, you, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> but for the most part, we don't have perfect head shaped babies. Because they're going through a canal, they have to be able to uh, conjure the, the, their bodies to do certain things. And some of you are in canals right now. You, you just don't look good. Seriously. <laughs> it's just not working. <laughs> But you know what? People have to help you get through some of those things and help you work some of those things through. It's very important that we are able to recognize that, not just for our lives, but even for other people that are coming in and say, oh, they don't fit the mold. They're not going to. 
You know, they're not going to, and we just have to allow them to get through that birth canal and get into the place where they're supposed to be, and we can literally help them become like us, and that's called discipleship. Amen. Amen. So I'm um, grateful for that. Hallelujah. So I am going to Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to begin at verse 35. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Um, in the King James Version, it says, has great recompense of reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive, come on everyone, the promise for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Let me just stop right there because I'm not going to come back to that. But let me just say what he's, he's saying. When he says my soul shall have no pleasure in him, what he's saying is I'm not going to aid you in that. Okay, he's, he doesn't mean that he's going to discard you. Just want everybody to understand that. He says, okay, well, if you choose to stay here, I can't do anything about it. Everybody, is that fair? Okay. Um, he's not going to aid you in drawing back. He doesn't want you to draw back. So he says, my soul won't have no pleasure in him. It doesn't mean that I'm going to throw you away. I'm not going to be bothered with you anymore. That doesn't mean that at all. He says, we'll pick up where you left off. <laughs> I'll be here when you get back. <laughs> um, uh, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, our old way of doing things, uh, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. This is good. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about the year of your reward. And this is the time where your reward is literally coming through and it's going to come through big. So um, if you don't know it yet, you already hit the jackpot. Amen. Uh, you already hit it, and you, you got to know it, and you have to walk in it. We're going to talk about what all that looks like. Father, we ask that you consecrate our ears and our eyes of our heart tonight so that um, we can move forward in the things that you have for us, and we open ourselves to receive from you the opportunities that you've given us uh, to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, this is a new year. One of the things that you see um, in corporate America, along with some other places, everybody gets rewarded for some things. In fact, even the federal government rewards you for the income that you've gotten, and you get your income tax return. You know, some of you like that. So, and you say, yep, I got an income tax. Some of you. I didn't say all. Some of you. Um, and there are some others who, you know, we're still waiting, and there's some others who just haven't gotten their skin in the game yet. Um, but for the most part, even in corporate America, some people get raises, they get bonuses this time of year. Now, if natural can reward you, why can't spiritual reward you? And one of the things that was in my spirit um, earlier uh, when the Lord was working with me on this is that we've been told all the time that God doesn't owe, it, owe us anything. He gave us life and life more abundantly. He doesn't reward us for the work we do. Uh, that is no farther, that is exceptionally far from the real truth. Okay? He does reward hugely. You don't go to war with God and not get rewarded. Um, and I constantly hear that from the old school of thought um, that we're not rewarded. We don't get what we're supposed to get. We're not, we don't get what belongs to us. That, that school of thought has to go out the door and we have to pick up on what God truly gives to us and the things that he has flowing for us. For your faithfulness in the kingdom, it is only the Father that can bring you the greatness of reward that you have. Um, and all of you have rewards sitting there. So there are times where you will draw back on your reward, but I want you to understand when you do that, then your reward is not removed. Okay? Um, to give you an example, uh, Apostle Denise got two letters in the mail 
uh, for property she doesn't even own, but her grandparents own it. And right now, there's a disproar in Philadelphia area where everybody's moving back downtown in Philadelphia. Now, her grandparents probably purchased that home for about ten, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000. Right now, um, in its state, which is not like a really good state, in its state, it sits on a corner. It's just a, a row house. Um, somebody wants to buy it for $239,000, you know? Um, well, Pastor Denise can't get happy because guess what? She's, <laughs> she's only one heir to the property, but no one wants to run up and say, well, you going to sell grandma's property? You going to sell grandma's property? You going to sell? So we're kind of working all that out. But what I wanted you to understand is even though there's reward there because it, they had a family of, I think, five, um, and her grandfather opened a corner store right there and he worked that store and worked the neighborhood, had another job, grandma stayed home, blah, 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 had the kids. Um, and they were deacons in the church as well. So th in that light, there's a reward out there for their stability. They set their roots. Are y'all there? They're dead. But their heritage is not. Does everybody follow me? So when we leave off, even if we don't want to, our kids inherit, and our children's children inherit it, okay? That's why you have to understand what you put out. Because if you put out the wrong things, your kids will inherit that too. Okay, and we want our kids to inherit the right things. Um, and sometimes that might mean you breaking the yoke over what was, if it's not right, you know. Okay, I know what mom went through, I know what dad went through, but hey, we ain't gonna have that here. We're gonna live in righteousness here. And we have to literally mark where we are righteous and where we're unrighteous, amen? Okay, so the word recompense of reward, and, and Chris, if you would put up the King James Version so that they can see that, and it says, cast not away therefore uh, your confidence which has great recompense of reward, and if you'll notice, the recompense of um, uh, is the change from the New King James Version instead of great reward. Um, recompense is a word in the scriptures. You don't see that very often, but what that word means is you not only get paid what you do, but you get your bonus too. Okay, that's the easiest way to describe it. Um, there are reparations that's supposed to be given to you. Okay, we paid you while you went to war. You know, we made sure it, as you were in war, um, you got your salary and everything else. But guess what? Now that you come back from war, there's some benefits that you're entitled to that you have to give. And some of you have been on the battlefield for families, battlefield for um, your, your employers, battlefield for so many different things. And you've been operating in faith for a lot of those things. And here, the Father expresses that he's going to begin to reward you and anoint you for those peculiar things. Some of those things will come in the form of an anointing. Some of those things will come in the form of physical or natural things that are given to you. Uh, some will come in the form of relationships given to you. There's a lot of things out there. The only thing is you don't get to choose how it comes. Okay, because the Father had... The Father knows what you have need of. But you must trust that all that he sends you is in line with the new desires that you have on your heart and will get you some place for some other things. So what he will give you will give you assistance in getting the pearl of great price that you really want. How's that? Amen? Um, so... God's going to literally open the door and begin to bring you some new things. And I'm going to talk about that uh, a little bit more in depth just in a second. Let me just get through some of these scriptures. Hebrews chapter 6, uh, verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, key, sacrifice, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Don't quit. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith 
and patience inherit the promise. In other words, you have a stick to it attitude. You're pushing. Hey, there's no option. Everybody say no option. Okay. Um, so God's in the place where he wants you to stay in with expectation. Now, a lot of us, we're not going to go because, you know, it's like, where else can we get eternal life? We're like the disciples. But he, he's bigger than that. He wants you to stay in. And I'm saying this to you now because it is the season of it. It is the season. And I will show you that. It is the season that you're going to see a breakout. But that breakout will only come if there's an expectation in your faith. Are you there? You know, I've given my last. There's nothing else I can give. It's coming through now. Amen. Okay? So, um, how many of you think um, God's got short supply in heaven? Okay. Right? No? Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches, his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, um, if we talk about God's arsenal in heaven, what is it? What does he have? That's real, that's real common. So, so what's, what's, what's part of the everything that you need? His presence. That's going to be huge this year. Salvation. Patience. Cartilage. Is that what she said? <laughs> you might as well say bones. <laughs> um, spare parts, Roger said. New eyes, so he doesn't have to wear glasses on his, his forehead. I didn't know his head, his head needed to be able to see. Uh, <laughs> what else? A car. Finances. Or a financer. Was that a hear, hear, yes? <laughs> uh, Absolutely. But one of the things that you did uh, during the time of that song, you changed it um, in the kingdom. Right. And that's where it's coming. It's coming in the kingdom. You know, and you have to get beyond for this year. You literally have to begin to set in motion um, this year an expectation for the new, for the restored. Okay. All right. So. Um, you hear some people sometimes talk about, well, I got a new knee and it's better than the old one. It's titanium, you know. <laughs> you know, I hear people <laughs> talking about that. You know. But I'm sorry. Uh, that's good. They feel that way. But listen, how many know God's got new body parts for you? Okay, I need you to believe that. I need you to know that he has that for you. And some of us are thinking, well, this is not going to work. It's not going to be. You got to get out of that. That is a mental ascent that he does not want us to have. We have to now begin to think the way he thinks. God says, I can replace that. I can replace that. Oh, you, you, you injured that in my war. If he could restore the ear of a man who his servant cut off, why would he not restore the ear of his own servants, the body of his own servants, and restore relationships of his own servants? So all these things are being restored. What we need you to do is we need you to begin to figure out what is needed for you and for your families. What is needed in this day and time. Not just for this day and time, but what needs to be set in motion so that there's a creation um, of things that you've never seen before. I hear people talk about wealth, and you know, um, it's almost like, um, you're not saying this, but this is how you feel. If I could just hit that lottery for $50 million, okay? It's there. It is there, but we don't have to hit a natural lottery. 
okay? There's a spiritual lottery that comes from, and it and, and begins in the spirit, but it'll manifest itself in the natural. I'll show you that in the scriptures too. Amen. All right, so everybody has to get that. And here's what you have to do. Those are the things that you share with one another. Those are the things that you begin to say, here's what I'm believing God for. Here's what I'm seeing. Um, because this is the year of touching and agreeing. Okay, you remember uh, Sunday, the pastor talked about authority, all right? And he talked about your judicial power. Well, well what's needed to turn the key? Two people. You need two people to turn the key. You have to get people around you. So a lot of times when you're isolated and the devil isolates you, you figure you have to be alone. No, you have to get somebody else to help you turn the key and turn that key to get you into the place of authority so that you can move out. You share those things with one another so that you can get into that place that God has for you. That is of the utmost importance right now. Um, that we're not walking alone, but that we are getting into the place where we are walking in his authority. Um, scripture for you, very important for this day and time. Revelations chapter 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Okay, by the way, angel of the church, what is that? Right, right. It's, it's the overseer of the church. Um, these things say, says the amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that they are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, opens to who? Okay. I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Okay. Uh, let me just go back just a little bit. Um, you probably say, well, I don't get an attitude like I have everything. Um, I'm not there. There's two sides of that. Um, there's a pride and there's a false pride, too. Um, some of you say, well, you know what? I'm okay. I'm just going to hang out right where I'm at. I don't need to go any further. I'm done. That's the same attitude as someone who says, I got the natural aiding me for everything. It's always going to be like this. He said, no, get off your high horse because it's no longer about you. You got to go. We can't stay here any longer. We need to get into the place where we're moving things forward. Oh, I can never be like that. Oh, yes, you can. You got to want to be like that. You got to want to go to that place. You don't have to stay where you are. And um, the years preceding this time, we've come to the table because of the battles and because of the warfare, we've come to the table battle-weary. Um, and when you get battle-weary, you pace yourself. And you decide when you want to fight and when you don't want to fight. Where God wants us to be at the place where when we smell war, we're on it. Okay? That's like asking a kid, hey, you want to go out inside and play? You want to go to school? That's a no-brainer. Right? Let's go play. <laughs> You know, so we have to have uh, a battle readiness so that we can go out and we can meet the demands that has been set before us. And we're fighting the good fight of faith. We're not fighting anything else. And we spend too much time wrestling demons and all that kind of stuff. We fight the good fight of faith. We lay hold on eternal life. Um, a lot of us are expecting God to do it all 
and, but we won't put in the energy to bring that. Um, part of putting in the energy to do that, before you can begin to clear an atmosphere, I'm going to talk about the door, you have to clear an atmosphere with praise. Um, Sunday when we came in here, um, there was a lot about the praise that was going on. The praise is ultimate in order to clear the atmosphere. Okay? Um, when you know the atmosphere is clear, there is a refreshment of your own attitude that smells like the king. Okay? You literally take on his scent. Just, that's how you know you, you've been with him. Everybody with me? Okay. Uh, you can't be there. Mm. Yeah, I've just been with the king. The king ain't like that. <laughs> the, 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 king, the king is seated on the throne. He's not in a bed, bed chamber. Did I say that? Does that make sense? This ain't wooing time. Okay, this is not puppy love time. This is sitting time on the throne. It's a time, hey, no, this is what we do. We are going to literally set judgment on some things. And we've seen people get into those modes. No, this is the way it's going to be. This is how we're going to rule. God wants us to be able to do the very same thing. Your praise is what's going to get you there. As we flow, as we change atmospheres, we do not come into the atmosphere and say, oh, this is what is. We come in and we make it what we desire it to be. Okay. You there? So, if any man hear me, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If he hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Let's talk about the door. What's this year? 57? 70? What is that? The year of the open door. What does that mean? I hear a lot of people say new beginnings, all that kind of stuff. But what does it really mean? The access is granted we needed to walk through. Okay, let me help you because um, the door is you. Okay? Um, you are literally the portal for the world to catch some things. In order for the world to catch anything, they're in a natural state. They have to catch it from the natural. They can't catch it from the spiritual. They don't have access to the spiritual. You do. The spiritual will beget the spiritual. The natural will beget the natural. But God has to be able to get to the natural. And the only way God can get to the natural was the same way he did with Jesus. He has to send his son born of a woman, okay, born unto men, who opened the door, okay? He even said that, yes, I am the, the door. He said that. So he's the actual open door. In other words, the revelation of the Spirit will come through me so that others might receive, all right? So some people will only see heaven and some things the way they see you. So when you dumb yourself down to be in a place of the natural, instead of moving in the revelation of how the Holy Spirit uses you, and I remember, this probably started about 10 years ago, um, God began to say things to me, and um, there were times where I was places, and I was like, okay, I'm going to say this, and he's like, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Well, you're telling me things, and I know it's for this conversation. Why am I not saying it? What he was telling me was, you can't say it like that. In other words, you, you can't move religiously anymore. Okay? I need you to be able to change so that what you heard in the spirit, you can <laughs> interpret it to the natural. Does that make sense? 
Okay, y'all know how we all talk different languages and all that. You can't just go into a neighborhood and, you know, start using words and people are like, what are you talking about? You know, people don't know where you are. There has to be a shift of the interpretation so that it can be understood. You all understand that. So when you start receiving, you become a portal, but as, an, as a portal, you have to know how to shift what you are saying so that people can carry what you are saying. And people can understand some things that you are giving out, right? So now you are a portal. So what is a portal? Anybody know? Portals usually run like this. Anybody know? Not connecting. Good example. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you literally have to pass through something. And it's literally like God can only pass through the portal in order to get to wor the, the natural world. We're the portals, okay, that, that passage. Do you remember Jacob when he sat down and he says, okay, there were some angels ascending and descending when he had his dream at Bethel, okay? Okay, there were some open portals, okay, that were established. Now, whether we realize it or not, we open portals. My question to you is, have you examined which portals have been open around you and which ones do you own that you can maintain their opening or close them? Okay? Because not all portals in the spirit are good portals. If you remember Daniel, and this is a time for Daniel right now, when Daniel was praying, he opened the portals so that he could receive revelation about what the dream was, okay? He opened the portals. He began to pray some more, and the prince of Persia came to him and said, hey, you know, the angel came and said, hey, I'm, I'm glad you kept praying, bro. This has got some things going on, just letting you know. I got to go here, blah, 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 but we got some aid coming to you. Everything's good, all right? He opened portals, and you have to understand the power that you have to be an open portal so that God can release some things into the kingdom on the earth, okay? So, the reception is what goes into your heart. The release is what comes out of your mouth. Oftentimes, you don't understand the latter or you don't understand the former until the latter comes. When you have opened your mouth, then you can see what's in your heart. But you have to get to the place now where you know what's in your heart, and you know you have to not receive that and bounce that thing out. Because in some of your lineage, there are portals that have been opened that you need to close. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Okay. And if you don't close those portals, those portals stay open, and you literally put that out there. And that is not a good thing. But we need to be able to close those portals. Close the wrong ones. Open the right ones. Um, one, of the thing, one of the portals that have to automatically close right away, spirit of unforgiveness. You can't handle that. can't have that stay there. For the rest of your life, you will be on the mark the devil standing at the door knocking you cannot ever allow the spirit of unforgiveness to come through how do you know that pastor because the scripture says twice in it offenses will come all right when those offenses come you got to move beyond that and find out what's going on hey did i offend somebody did something happen you know, why was that? Why did I take that as an offense? Maybe I took it as an offense because there's a door open. And I need to close the door. Everybody there? Okay. So you have to figure out what, where the portals are in your personal life. What you have to do to begin to close those doors down, open new doors up. Because there's a reward that is waiting for you. And sometimes you can't get 
other things through because other things are open, okay? Your speech on how you do things, how you manage things, um, not just with your speech, but some of you worry and you think. Um, I wish you could run a recorder on your thinking. <laughs> Literally, okay? But it's easy to figure out what's controlling because you've got to watch what comes out of your mouth. And that's what you can find, what doors are open that have not been closed. Hallelujah. So that's important to the king that we understand that we're under a new place. So now he stands at the door and he's not. What door is he standing? He's standing at your door. He's knocking. He's looking to come in. And he's looking to be again to bring change to you. Psalm 24 verse 7 says, lift up your heads. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, O ye portals. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, you porters, portals. The king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up your heads, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Now that goes twice in the Bible. He said it twice. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up your heads, O you everlasting doors. Okay? You are the doors. You are the gate. He says it twice. In other words, I'm going to pound this into you. I need you to get this. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Um, Pastor Roger said, then I'm just sitting there watching. I'm like, okay, this is really good. So he's, t he's there tonight. He said, okay, I want you to just lift up your hands. You know, when you lift up your hands like that, you open the portal. You open the portal. So, you know, um, wh what, are you, what are you waiting for? You're, you're not waiting for the presence. The presence is already there. But you're bringing invitation to the blessings that God wants us to receive. So once that comes, you have to go with that anointing on you. No, we're blessed. We're going to be blessed. We have all that we need. We begin to walk in everything that we need. Amen? All right. So um, that restoration has come to us. So here's my last comment to you tonight. There was a dance that was done in June uh, to a song uh, when Bishop was here. What was the dance? Strike the ground. Strike the ground. What does that mean? Okay. Um, do you have the words back there? No? Did we, did we fry them or dispose of them? Does anybody remember the words? I'm looking at dance people. Did you find it, sir? You know? No, he don't have it. Anybody remember it? There's a war going on in the heavenlies. And we're tearing down wicked principalities. Heavenlies. There's a war going on in the heavenlies, and we're raising up righteousness. We're raising up righteousness. Our hearts are crying out. We need to see you now. Your kingdom come in power. Send the rain. That's the anointing. Send the rain. Okay? All right. So... When he talks about us beginning to move forward and strike the ground, all right? Strike the ground. What are you being called to strike? Okay. <laughs> so what is that? Who, who's supposed to open a new business this year? Okay, so how's it going to happen? If you have not written the vision, it's not going to happen. So you have to write the vision. Something's got to go. Something's got to move. What type of research has to be done? Where are we pushing? Okay, we're not there yet. Where are we? We're still in a place of prayer. Why do we pray? To get strategy. And implement it. We pray to talk to God. For talking. What do you need to talk to God for? Because he wants to talk. I mean, he's like, yeah, he does want to talk to you. Revelation. 
Relationship. That's not why you pray. No? I'm saying why we have intercession. Um, let, 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 me, let me say this. Let me just talk about prayer first. Because everybody's going to get taught on this this year. How you pray is how you will receive. If your prayer is general, that's exactly what you're going to get. Your prayer becomes specific, that's exactly what you will receive. One of the things that Apostle Denise um, does, and I mean both of us do it, but we're very specific about receiving first the word of the Lord because you have to anchor the time of prayer. God receives his words. When you anchor that, then behind that comes revelation. If the revelation comes first, then you get the word to anchor. But either way, there has to be an anchoring of his word and there has to be specifics. Perhaps some of you are working out specifics for the next move of God in your life. Okay, so you are still at the planning table. That's okay, as long as you know where you are and don't say, well, you know, God hasn't done anything yet. No, you need to be able to be in prayer for that. And if you are going to be a success at anything that God has called you to do, you have to stay in a place of prayer. You cannot go anywhere without the place of prayer. And some of us have yet to even get into a place of prayer. Okay, you have to get there. Right. You say, well, I got this, you know. Everybody gets to do this. No, not everybody, particularly you. Everybody follow me. Well, you know, I know how to execute, you know. I was raised and I was taught, you know. No, you were taught the man kind of way, but you need to know the God kind of way and how God wants to open new doors for you and how God wants to begin to encourage you and bring you. So you need to know what, what is he getting you to step into. And I don't care where you are. There's never a time that you're not going to release some things. And part of you actually releasing um, things in life and doing particular things, and this is a so key, it's so key. You can't get your blessings unless there's a sacrifice. David said, I will not offer up the Lord anything that did not cost me something. What's it going to cost you? What, what is God laying on the floor, your threshing floor? What is he laying there that's going to cost you something? What literally has to be grinded up? What is he giving you? in order to bring back as a sacrifice. What was Hannah's sacrifice? Her firstborn. She had tons of kids after that. You know, people, how can you give up your kid? That's easy. Her relationship with God was greater than her relationship with her son as it should have been. Are you there? Was that a hand? Totally agree. She said time, for those of you who didn't hear. Um, our world is filled with a lot of stuff. We, we need to be able to give that time up for him. I mean, you coming out here, do you think that you did not sacrifice time to come out tonight? All right? God sees that. Okay? That's a sacrifice. We bring the sacrifice of Whoa! That's huge. That is really huge. So, when you come in and it's like, oh, we're in, we're in praise and uh, oh, I'm, not, I'm just not feeling it. I'm just, go oh God, I'm just here. You know? The joy of the Lord is a sacrifice. You got to come out. You got to bring that joy. You're standing before the king. Okay? Literally every single Sunday, this corner becomes a portal. Okay? How do you know? The prophetic words come forward. And they match up with the word of the Lord which has come forward. 
So there's a portal here that's for an open heaven so that you might receive the things that God has for us. You have to literally grab it. You can't just be in the midst and say, uh, like Peter, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's build a tabernacle. Oh, no, we ain't trying to build a tabernacle. Lord, tell me the strategies. Give me the strategies. Download to me. What, what is it? Where are we going? What's happening? Are you there? Okay, it's important that we figure out what season are you in. Because let me tell you what striking the ground is going to bring to me. Some of you have jobs. You're about to move into promotions, and you have to take that opportunity. Opportunity's going <laughs> pop right there. And some people want to say, do you want it? It's not a question whether you want it or not. Take it. Take it. Just take it. Take it. I'm sensing. I'm sensing a, a transition that's about to come in my job. Oh, sense it. Sense it. Grab it. Are, is, is everybody there? I was in a meeting today. I was sitting there. I was talking with someone, and um, I dropped somebody's name without asking them. And I said, go after them. You know, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know how to get a hold of them? Yeah, Absolutely. Then I had to call a person and tell them I dropped their name. And she was about to get a, car, a call. But it just rung to me right then and there. That was an open door. It was an opportunity. Let it happen. Are you there? We don't, ain't no time to talk about it. It's an open door into your greatness. Do you remember? Do you remember Esther? Mordecai didn't come back and talk to her. Okay. It's like, look, hey, the king's looking for a wife. Get yourself together. Let's go. Okay? You got one year to prepare. All right? Let me scrub all that junk up off of you. And that's what she did. She bathed and got all the, the junk off of her. You know, we got to find out what the oils and spices were because that could be some great perfume. That could be some great soaps, you know. <laughs> we should, I'm, I'm literally serious. I'm quite sure somebody already thought of that. <laughs> but, and, and then she's, you know, she bathed in um, the fruits and the spices and all of that. But it says, listen, she did um, an exfoliation system that was such that when she went before the king, he was like, oh, Whoa, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was, there, was, there was no question who was going to be the queen. There was no one to compare. Listen, he kept going down the line. You're talking hundreds of women. You're not talking three or four or five. You're talking hundreds of women. He kept going down the line. And every time he sees somebody else, there would be a reference back here when he passed Esther. Or Hadassah. You know, that was her name, given name. Uh, every, every time, boom, ah, I still see that face. Oh, I still see that face. And you're going to go before kings, and you're going to go before potentates, all these people, and guess what? They're going to have interviews with you, and guess what? They're going to remember something you said or something you did or the countenance that you brought forth. People are going to remember. Why? Because they're going to rise to the coming of the king. And guess who's bringing the king? You are. You're the portal. You are bringing the king. There's such a restoration that's coming in the earth right now. People are going to be flocking with a hunger to the Lord like we've never seen before. So who do you think they're going to run to? They're going to run to you. And you are going to have to literally deposit with them those things that they need. Midwife them into the place that they need to be. Okay, so I'll say this to you. You gave that to them, they needed the end of the week, you gave it to them on Thursday. Well, I'm going to let you know, don't you stutter step with anything. If I was you, I would have went back and I will study every bit of their program, know it inside out. You should be able to spell everything backwards and you should begin to pick up on the training levels that you want, whatever they have. Find out the areas that you are most weakest in and make them your strength. Like, for instance, if your weakness have been in the areas of the finances, because as a manager, you got to know all that kind of stuff, you need to go get you some uh, managing for dummies books and pick up on that and read those things. Not just read, just read. Don't try and retain it. Just read it, just read it, read, read it. And allow the Holy Spirit to bring things back to you that you normally don't have. This is what happened with the Hebrew boys. 
when they went into the camp, they knew who they were. When they were before the court of Nebuchadnezzar, they, were, they knew who they were as Hebrew boys. But guess what? They became skillful in their camp as well. They knew everything. This is a time of Daniel right now where we will be the judges. So you grab everything, everything that you need to know, you need to know it. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. I remember when I was, going, I was in college and, you know, you, there was a, you had the job placement and you had to sign up for interviews and everything else, but you had to have a certain GPA that you could sign up for all these interviews. And I signed up for all these interviews, blah, 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 blah. And I went and they said, um, you have an interview with Aetna Casualty. I said, oh, okay, great. So for what position? I applied for two of them. What position? And they said, well, one's for marketing and one's for claims. I said, oh, okay. So I went in the interview. I never asked, and the, the lady that was interviewing me, she never asked me, um, or told me what she was interviewing me for, marketing and claims. But guess what? I went and read up on the company. Then I went and read up on claims. I went and read, mark, back then marketing was huge. I went and read up on marketing. So I'm literally sitting in the interview. By the way, I'm only 21 at this particular time. 20 or 21? It was either 20 or 21, because I started college at 17. So um, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm, she's talking to me. And I'm literally seeing stuff I read off the page. So as I'm responding, I'm responding to stuff they had in their book. The next day, I get a phone call. Okay. By the way, we didn't have cell phones back there. So um, I got a phone call in my dorm by the phone. Say, hey, we'd like you to come to Pittsburgh for an interview. No problem. I had to go to Pittsburgh, and I said, call my buddy up. I say, bro, I just had an interview, and they want me to come to Pittsburgh. I got one issue. What? I only own one suit. I need another suit. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the same size. So he said, okay. He worked at from Mellon Bank at that particular time. He said, I'll meet you at such and such a time, and uh, I'll bring your suit. Okay, fine. So I met him at such and such a time, went into the bathroom, got a suit. Yeah, change. Yeah, I was Superman all the time. <laughs> change. I went to the interview. Uh, when I got done the interview, they said, Mr. Nelson, we really appreciate you coming. Uh, we'd like to bring you on board. Thank you. I accept. That was an open door. Okay? And you're going to have many of those. Get ready for it. Okay? Don't stutter step. Know your stuff. Know your skills. Push it forward. Amen. Any other questions? I need to cl close. Well, God bless you. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's give God praise today. Thank you, Lord. Come on, declare with me. Lord Jesus, I am an open door. I am one that you have set. I declare, now I declare now that I have joined myself unto you. Come through the door by the power of your spirit. Of your spirit. Carry, me Carry me into the natural that I might bring change, I might bring change. to every place my feet shall tread. I, shall tread. I, thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I am your ambassador, I am your ambassador. and I run for you. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. God bless you all. Have a great day.